Hello everyone, I'm Crydax and welcome to our compact, clean, and tileable blueprint design series. We're working with the Mark 1 blueprint designer today since that's what you get first in the game. And by compact, clean, and tileable, we mean, well, it's small, right? Compact. It's as tight as it can get in the space that we're using, more or less. It's clean, meaning we keep belts off the floor, no belts along the floor that you'd run into. And we're also reducing clipping to little or no clipping when it comes to mergers and belts and power lines. We like to keep everything um, somewhat realistic. I don't mind a tiny amount of clipping, but we're avoiding any major kind of bad looking clipping. And finally, they are tileable designs, meaning you can connect as many of them in a row as you'd like. Uh, so even late game, you know, you could smelt 600 ingots on one line of these. So without any further ado, let's jump in. I won't even use the jetpack because at this point in the game, you wouldn't have the jetpack. So I'll show you how you'd build it uh, as if you didn't have the jetpack. So we're going to grab the smelters and it points in whichever direction uh, the computer is as far as a little the white blueprint arrow. So I personally like to face my outputs towards the arrow. Uh, it's up to you how you want to do that, though. You could also make it so that the arrow is the direction your inputs and outputs come from or, you know, the direction you want to tile. It's up to you. Uh, it's going to work regardless of which way you arrow it. And you just want to fit the smelter snug up against the left side. It doesn't really matter where it's at forwards and backwards wise because we're not going to use most of the space um, on the front and back. And you're going to hold control so that you can get all six smelters built. And now we're going to take our stackable conveyor poles and we're going to line them up right next to our smelter, not uh, clipping through the frame, but one space away. And you also want to line up the right edge of the stackable pole kind of with the, the shroud of the input. And we're going to go up three tiles there. And then we're going to come to the output and we're going to do the same thing, kind of line up the edge of the power pole or conveyor pole with the shroud of the output. And we're going to go up four tiles this time. And if you don't like the, there is minor clipping that we'll have with the merger and the top of the smelter. I don't mind it because it's very minor, but if you don't like it, you can go one pull higher for this design and that will work fine as well. Now we run to the other end and do the same thing. And then we'll go ahead and connect our belts across. I like to go in from the left and out to the left. Oh, I don't have my jetpack. I just tried to use it. <laughs> but you may want a different design. You may want your outputs to actually go off the right side, or you may want both your input and your output to be on the right side. So it's totally up to you which direction you go with your belts. It will The blueprint will work exactly the same either way, and you can follow all the same steps. So nothing to worry about there. Now, how are we going to get these splitters lined up? Because if we just naturally try to place them and you hold control, there's no snapping. So there are some tricks I've learned as I've built blueprints and I will share them with you. Um, this one doesn't require any fancy tricks. You can literally just place a lift onto the front of your smelters here. And then you can hold control and your splitter will snap to the, the proper spot. And that is very nice. Sometimes it doesn't work. And there's a secondary trick that I will show you in future videos to put it uh, summarized you basically put a splitter right on the lift which looks really weird and we don't use it that way but once you do that then the splitter or merger will snap properly to the belt and then you can deconstruct it so right now you can see these things aren't hooked up so we deconstruct our conveyor lifts and now listen closely did you hear that tick that little click sound means that it is connecting directly to the splitter and it's connected directly to the input. And I really like this design because there's no miniature belt segments that you have to place that you can't see and are really hard to upgrade. I really like this design because of not having any of those short stubby belt segments that are hard to upgrade. So when you go to upgrade this blueprint later with higher mark of belts, you can just upgrade all of the lifts and all of the easily visible belt segments between mergers and splitters and you're good to go. So that's it. That alone right there uh, gets the input taken care of. Woof. 
Mark four belts are fast. And now we just have to take care of the output. So the easiest way to do this, well, you'll notice if we go to mergers, oh no, they're not snapping again. So we're gonna have to do the same thing. We bring a lift up. You're gonna have to click it up a few times if you leave it at the base height, it's too far away to click. You can be within a few up or downs of the actual belt and it will still snap while holding control. So it's not a big deal to get the measurement exactly right. If you are curious what the measurement is, the default lift will attach to a second layer conveyor here. And then for every two notches you go up, it goes up one more uh, stackable pole. So if I wanted to actually be at the exact right level, it would be up one, two, three, four. And that is exactly the level that it connects on later. So you'll see if we snap our mergers onto the belt, we can go ahead and do that. Make sure you're not building them on top of the the lift itself but actually snapped to the belt sometimes that can be a little hairy and so now it looks like it's connected but it's not you do have to deconstruct all the lifts again and then reconstruct them and again you should hear that little tick sound and that means it's properly connected And we're almost done here. All we need is power and then a couple finishing touches and we'll be done with our blueprint. So all the outputs are hooked up. You can see that the mergers are all going in the right direction here. And again, there's no short stubby belt segments you have to worry about. And I absolutely love that about this design. Now we're not powered up. So power it was a little tricky on this one to get um, to be compact, I couldn't have the power behind the blueprint, right? That wouldn't be compact. And I preferred to not use floor power, uh, which is basically when you do wall wall outlets, but on the floor and you kind of just clip the wires through the floor because that could look bad with glass uh, designs. And so this is this looks a lot better if you are using the glass floors. So you take your power pole and I'm gonna use Mark 1s because you may or may not have Mark 2s. This works with both marks of power pole. And we'll go ahead and climb up here. And like I said, you're gonna build it clipping just into the corner, that little corner of the foundation of the smelter. And in doing so, let me turn on my flashlight so you can see that very easily. In doing so, believe it or not, we actually completely avoid clipping the power lines. And it looks like that wouldn't be true, but when you... So you connect each uh, power line up to the smelter to the right of it, and then we'll connect the power lines to each other. And if you look, you can see that the wire goes just in between all this nonsense without clipping into anything. And so we'll keep connecting up the poles to each other and then to the smelter to the right. And there you go. Now all your blueprints are powered up and you can see there's no clipping of the wires uh, from pole to pole or from pole to smelter. And all the smelters are powered up. Let's make sure we didn't forget any. Yep, we got all six. And that's it. The final finishing touch that I recommend, you don't have to do it because you may not like the way it looks when it's by itself, but I prefer to remove these final stackables. And the reason is that when you're tiling it, if you leave those in, then they will overlap with the ones on this end and uh, it'll actually make a, a kind of spaced out section between the two sets and they'll overlap. And if they overlap, then you have to deconstruct one set because they're like literally the same things in the same place. So I recommend against leaving those there. This way we can just connect up the splitter and merger of one section to this part of the next section. And we'll, we'll show you what that looks like. So now the blueprint's done. That's literally it. There's our six smelter design. We head over to the blueprint designer. We can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna do example smelters x6 and I'll name it mark four because we have the mark four belt. Then you set your directory. It's gonna go here in the examples section. The icon, obviously you will probably wanna do a smelter but you can do whatever you want. Editor Crydax here. One thing I forgot to mention is that you can pre-select all of the recipes on the smelters. So if you really want to be comprehensive, you could make a version that has iron ingots already selected. You could make a version that has copper ingots already selected, cateterium ingots, etc. And then you might want to use those icons for your blueprints. 
You can set the color. I don't know how you want to do a color scheme. You could do it based on the marks of your belt. You could do it based on the size of the blueprint. You know, you could have green ones be smaller, yellow ones are medium sized blueprint, and then red ones are big ones. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. But you pick a color or leave it as default and then you hit save. I'm going to override it because I already had an example. And now let's look at what it would look like to connect two of these together. So we've got our BP and we can place it however we want in the world. We see our arrow is facing towards the output. We know the inputs come in from the left and then they go out to the left. So you can set your build mode by toggling with the R key to blueprint. You paste one and then you should be able to hold control or it actually just naturally snaps. You don't even need to hold control when you're in blueprint mode. And you wanna make sure that little white arrow is facing the same way. You plop down your second blueprint. And now all we have to do to connect them is to hook up the power. So we'll get a power line attached to, sometimes it can be hard to aim at, that power pole to this power pole. Boom, now our power is connected and the belt is not gonna be connected. I personally remove this because in this particular blueprint it clips and I don't really feel like it needs to be there visually. So I remove the little stubby belt and I remove the stackable and then you just connect those two splitters and now your inputs are good to go. And then we go around to the front and do the same thing and that's going to be it. That is our uh, tileable six smelter design. And that's it. It's a compact, clean, and tileable design. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any thoughts or comments, let me know what you think. I'm going to be continuing this compact, clean, and tileable series for all of the early game buildings that you would ever put in the Mark 1 designer. Everything up to a manufacturer. Once you get to manufacturers, you have access to the Mark 2 blueprint designer. So I will then, at that point, switch to the Mark 2. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next episode.